Jesus rose from the dead. You know, we know this story, but just think about that for a minute. He rose from the dead. And in that rising, I mean, that is a supernatural event. Things like that aren't supposed to happen. Uh, and in that rising, we see that Jesus had some, still had some very extraordinary power. I mean, all through his life he did, but even after he rose again, he has this extraordinary power to walk through walls, right? As the gospel text said, the disciples were behind closed doors. They were, even those doors were locked, and Jesus appeared among them. And here's what I find almost a little funny, but kind of unusual or, or interesting about this text as I was thinking about preaching today is what Jesus wanted to show them right away was, hey guys, look, scars. I still have the scars. Do you see that? Look, and he's, he's showing them. Now today's day and age, if you had the capability to rise again in these supernatural powers, wouldn't you get rid of the scars? I mean, most of us would, probably. But for Jesus, it was important that he kept them. And the first thing he showed the disciples upon entering the room, and it, it was still the first day of the week, so in the morning, Mary Magdalene and the disciples find the tomb empty. He's risen. That night is when he first goes in to see the disciples and shows, yes, I have my scars. And then it was a week later that Thomas experienced those scars. Put your finger here, Thomas. Look. Put your hand here. No more disbelief. Believe. Jesus rose from the dead with his scars. He rose from the dead with his scars. And I think that that must be important. Those scars are important. And what those scars showed the disciples and what they show us is that this is the price that Jesus was willing to pay. This is the sacrifice he was willing to make. And maybe it says, too, that sometimes sin leaves a mark. And even if that mark is there, you can live. Those scars were not a sign of shame for Jesus they were a sign of triumph, of how he conquered sin and death and rose again. Scars are important. As we think about our own lives, I think many of us have scars. Some of them may be in our skin, right? Uh, you've had a surgery, you wiped out on your bike when you were a kid, I mean, whatever it was. We've got those scars, but a lot of the scars that we, we have are scars that are in the inside. They're scars from relationships that have gone bad. They're scars from losing a job. They're scars from um, maybe grief or loss or something like that. But we all have scars. And as I was preparing for today, one of those scars that, that I've, I've, I've had a number of conversations lately, I've been thinking about a lot, is the scars that are left after a divorce. And I suspect... Everybody in here, every single person has been touched by divorce in some way, shape, or form. If not you, a family member, a friend, uh, you know, parents, children, uh, it, it happens. Everybody is touched by divorce these days. And a divorce leaves some pretty deep scars. Uh, the first thing can be kind of spiritual because when we read the Bible, what we read in the Bible is that God says that divorce is wrong. And Jesus even says that when they talk to him about, well, Moses gave us permission to get a divorce, and Jesus then gives the Genesis chapter 2, or 3, excuse me, man and woman are joined together, let no one separate them. This is, this is the intention. Uh, if you don't believe the Bible that divorce is wrong, I would suggest that you ask anyone who's ever been through one. Anyone who's ever been through one will tell you, divorce is not what God wants. Sometimes they are necessary. I've done a number of weddings, and every time I do pre-marriage counseling, I've never finished pre-marriage counseling with the couple saying, yeah, we're ready to get married, and, and we can't wait for this to end in a divorce. It doesn't happen. It never happens. The intention is always... This is a love that will last a lifetime. But sometimes promises get broken. 
People grow apart. People do change. Families get ripped apart. And it leaves scars. Yes, necessary. But I've yet to meet anyone who's ever been through a divorce. Even if they're relieved and grateful that that divorce is over, never met anyone who said, yeah, that divorce was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the next one. It doesn't happen. It leaves scars on the parents and on the kids. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose with his scars. Jesus is the template, and Jesus, through his death and resurrection, says you can rise and live with those scars. And those scars are important. They show lessons learned when we engage in that which tears us apart, which breaks us down, which hurts us. We can rise to a maturity of faith, to a new understanding of what love really is all about. And for those who have been through a divorce, you can see when someone emerges on the other side and is able to process what's happened and can stand there and say, I know who I am. I am a beloved child of God. I am good. I am worthy of being loved. And sometimes those folks get remarried and find that they can love and be loved in meaningful and profound ways. I was at a funeral recently where um, the, it was the mother who died, or the stepmother, if you will. But all of the kids in this blended family simply referred to her as mom. And at that funeral, every one of those kids stood up and said, you know, from the very moment our families came together, she loved us like we were her own kids. Because we were her own kids. Love can rebound. We can rise and live with those scars. I had the opportunity also to work with a, uh, a teenager a few years ago. Uh, when she was 16, uh, her parents had been divorced when she was very young. She was four or five when her parents were divorced. And in that time, it was a very acrimonious divorce. And the father basically said, I'm done. I'm putting this part of my life behind you. I don't want anything to do with this family, with the kids, anything, and was gone. But at 16, she had this realization that as she was trying to come to terms with what this meant, and her mother had remarried, she loved her stepfather, everything was good there, but there was something that needed to be resolved for her in regard to her parents' divorce. And she asked her mom, can I call dad? And mom explained to her, you know, when he left... He left. He doesn't want anything to do with this part of his life anymore. He closed that part of the book. He's, and they hadn't spoken in like 10 years. But she said, you know, I need to do this. So she, she called her father. And she tried a number of times and left messages and never heard anything back. Never heard anything back. Well, one day she finally called and he answered. She explained who she was. I'm, I'm your daughter. Um, you know, I got to this point in my life, I felt like I needed to reach out to you and just uh, talk to you. And he replied to her, when I divorced your mom, I put an end to that part of my life. I don't want anything to do with that anymore, and I don't want anything to do with you. I'm done. And she replied, well, I just want you to know that you will always be my dad. And I will always love you. And if you ever change your mind, you know how to reach me. When Jesus rose, he rose with his scars. In spite of the scar that she felt from this broken relationship, she was able to rise and reach out to her dad and even in the face of that say, I love you. As it played out, she cracked her dad's heart that day. Cracked it open and a relationship was formed. And when she eventually went to college, her dad participated 
in helping her figure out where she was going to go to school and even help to support her as she started college. We all have scars. We all have scars. It might be through a divorce. It might be from the loss of a loved one. Grief can leave a deep mark on all of us that never goes away. If you've lost a parent, a child, a spouse, uh, if you've ever been fired from your job, if you've ever had a falling out with a member of your family uh, or a dear friend, if you've had a traumatic medical experience or surgery or accident, there are so many things that can leave scars on us, that can change us fundamentally, that can, can throw us and knock us back. But Jesus rose with his scars. And through his death and resurrection, we too can rise. Whatever scars we have, are not scars of shame for us, but rather scars that show that we can live in spite of them, that we have learned, that we can love, that we have these experiences. But Jesus today becomes the template to follow him through death into life, that we can have the audacity, in spite of our scars, to stand redeemed, to stand forgiven of all that has been, to stand open to what can be, to be the Easter people of God, to share that same love, that same redemption, that same resurrection that we have with those around us. So, beautiful broken people of Emmanuel, rise, live, dream, hope, through his death and resurrection, Jesus calls you into something new, into life. Rise and live. Amen.